Tracy Johnson from West Ed will share ideas to help toddler care teachers support family understanding of young children's cognitive development. She will also share ways that families can support the mathematics development of our youngest learners. Join Tracy in breakout room two for All in the Family, infusing math experiences in the daily life of infants and toddlers. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm glad you're joining me here today for this session titled All in the Family, infusing math experiences in the daily life of infants and toddlers. Before we jump into today's presentation, I'd like to share with you a bit of information about the project and agency that I work for, the PITC Regional Support Network, or PITC RSN for short. PITC is a collaboration between the California Department of Education, Early Learning and Care Division, and West Ed. Previously known as PITC Partners for Quality, the PITC Regional Support Network offers subsidized virtual, right now, um, and hopefully in the future, uh, on-site training and technical assistance in the PITC philosophy to groups of infants to and toddler care teachers. Uh, we serve administrators as well as family child care providers throughout California. We also offer online courses focusing on the PITC approach that occur throughout the year with rolling starts typically in January, May, and September. You can find a lot of information on our website at PITC.org, which will be listed in the resource slide at the end of this presentation. Our primary mission is to support programs serving children birth to 36 months in California and these programs include center-based child care, family child care, or in-home care settings, as well as family, friend, and neighbor care providers. I hope you'll reach out to us if we can be of help to you in your efforts to provide high quality care to children under three years of age. I'll also be sharing my contact information at the end of the presentation and hope that you'll reach out if we can be of any assistance to you in your support of infants and toddlers. So in our time together today, we're going to focus on how early math experiences are woven throughout the daily life of infants and toddlers. We'll think about how to recognize those moments and make the most of them, as well as support families to infuse these types of rich experiences into their interactions with their children in the home. Our agenda for today will include the following ideas related to the infant toddler, uh, infants and toddlers early math learning. First, math skills are connected to other learning domains, such as language and social and emotional development. When infants and toddlers feel emotionally and physically safe, they are more confident to explore their world, which supports the development of math skills. This might be experimenting with how tall they can build a tower before it falls or climbing the steps to go down a slide. Responsive adults provide math language to describe the concepts children are exploring. We'll revisit this idea throughout this presentation. Second key concept is really that math is everywhere. Math concepts show up every day and in every way in the infant and toddler's life. We'll also highlight how the child's family is their first teacher and also their lifelong teacher. As the title of this session highlights, all in the family, we'll be focusing on the simple idea that math is embedded in every interaction and caregiving moment between the infant and the important people in their life. This of course includes the fam child's family setting and their interactions with others in their life. Uh, that might be the child care setting or home, as well as considering the play materials that are provided uh, to them. Unlike our fairly brief time with a young child in our care, their family is with them over the course of their entire life. We intersect with the infant or toddler for maybe a few years at best. So that reminds us we need to honor and support the family's role in their child's learning. Lastly, we wanna talk about how infants and toddlers build early foundations for math during play and daily routines. We'll explore some of the ways that math knowledge and skills show up in the child's self-initiated play and in daily caregiving routines. 
The resources that I've drawn on for this presentation are the California Infant Toddler Learning and Development Foundations and the Infant Toddler Curriculum Framework. Also, I want to highlight a lovely, uh, very useful website called All About Young Children, which I hope you'll visit often after this presentation. Before we talk specifically about math concepts for infants and toddlers, I want to briefly provide a definition for cognitive development. Typically, math knowledge and skills fall under the cognitive domain of development. So let's start off with a basic definition of what we mean by cognitive development. Cognitive development refers to the process of growth and change in intellectual mental abilities such as thinking, reasoning, and understanding. It includes the acquisition and consolidation of knowledge. This is from the California Infant Toddler Learning and Development Foundations that I just mentioned. To optimize early cognitive development, infant toddler care teachers need to establish relationships that provide infants and toddlers with a secure base for exploration and discovery. Infants and toddlers thrive in environments that offer a mix of novelty, familiarity, and appropriate challenges. They actively learn through interacting with adults and other children and imitating them. Above all, their natural curiosity and drive to learn grow through the responsiveness and encouragement of caring adults. Math isn't a subject to be taught only once children start proper school. Math skills begin developing very early. Research shows that supporting math skills in early childhood is related to later success in school. Children's math skills in preschool, in fact, predict how well they will score in third grade reading and math. These points emphasize that learning, no matter what domain is involved, is integrated. Learning crosses all domains of development. So while today we may be focusing on early math learning, which falls in the cognitive domain, we know that the child learns as a whole being. We cannot truly divide up their learning into distinct domains of development. And truly, this has also been one of the strengths of our field, of the field of early care and education. We really understand how to care for and support the whole child, no matter what topic or content area we might be focusing on in the moment. The California Department of Education has identified 10 cognitive foundations that are described in detail in the foundation's publication, which I've mentioned. During our brief time together, I'm going to highlight just two of these cognitive foundations, the foundations of number sense and classification. These are the two that are most often closely associated with early math skills and knowledge. But I wanna emphasize that each of the 10 cognitive foundations listed on this slide all have a place in the child's early math exploration. But as we only have about 45 minutes for this presentation, we can't dive into all 10 foundations. But remember that all 10 of these cognitive foundations are at play in any early math exploration that an infant or toddler engages in. As I've mentioned, young children explore and begin to practice the skills needed for mathematics long before they enter elementary school. During the first years of life, children learn to count, and recognize shapes and pattern, compare sizes and amounts, and recognize similarities and differences. As they grow older, <clears throat> they learn to count a few numbers. They also build their understanding of quantity through activities such as putting plates and cups on a table. They become aware of how adults use counting in everyday life and learn about how to use numbers by imitating those adults. Throughout the early years, most children are naturally interested in numbers. Fun activities that involve numbers strengthen children's natural interest and encourage them to learn more about math concepts. So let's explore now the foundation of number sense a little more deeply. Number sense is one of the cognitive foundations as I've mentioned. Number sense includes several early math concepts, such as quantity counting and number order, which is about first, second, third, that kind of thing. 
it turns out infants pay attention to quantity during their interactions with people and young infants, even young infants, are developing early ideas about numbers even before they can talk. They begin by focusing on one thing at a time. They'll reach for a toy you hold out to them and they learn about quantity as they reach or look for more than one object. Also, in a room full of people, an infant will watch just her dad as he walks towards her. One. As babies approach eight months of age, when they hold one toy in each hand and you offer a third toy, they may drop one of those toys they are holding so that they can hold on to the new object. This actually shows a beginning understanding of what the concept of two is all about. Infants are introduced to counting skills through everyday interactions, such as parents counting their fingers and toes, or getting two kisses, one on each cheek. Before we move on, I want to highlight that very um, useful website that I mentioned earlier, all about young children. This website was developed by the California Department of Education and West Ed, the agency I work for and is designed for parents specifically. One of the most useful aspects of this website is that the content and material found there, I'm highlighting my cursor, is actually translated and available into eight different languages, which is really unusual um, as far as my research goes. There are clips in, included in this website of parents who view a short video clip of children and then they hold a discussion with other parents as to their thoughts about child development and their parenting practices. It's a very accessible website and has great handouts that explain child development for parents. And I wanna encourage you to check it out. I'm sharing this website at this point in the presentation because there's a clip focusing on number sense, which we're about to dive into, on the All About Young Children website. And I wanted to point um, that out to you. We're not gonna watch that clip today, but it is there if you are interested in viewing it later on your own. So again, check it out, check it out and enjoy those eight languages. So now let's go back to number sense. To gain a better understanding of this cognitive foundation of number sense, I'm going to share a video clip with you. This video clip, clip again, it comes from the California Infantile Learning and Development Foundations. And let's uh, watch it and find out what we mean um, by the term number sense. This foundation presents children's developing understanding of number and quantity. At around eight months, children usually focus on one object at a time, yet may at times hold two objects one in each hand. So when you got this, when this one?
at around 18 months, children demonstrate an understanding that there are different amounts of things. At around 36 months, children show some So having viewed uh, this clip about eight and 18 month olds, um, I'd love you to jot down a few ideas uh, that you thought of um, that occurred to you as you think about the, the ch supporting children's understanding of number and quantity. Um, I know you're going to do it on your own, but uh, I thought it was a good spot to just give you a second to think about what are you hearing? Um, what, what are the skills and behaviors children display at this age? And then I'm going to um, finish showing you this video that now will go into 36 month olds same foundation for number sense so i'll show that now understanding that numbers represent how many and demonstrate an understanding of words that identify how much Yeah, Kayla has two horses. I'm going to take one slice. You can take one or two slices. I'm taking two slices. Yeah. Opacity, you'll be next. Looks like he's not ready. Did you want to turn? Okay, are you ready to tell me again? You're about to right, yeah. tell me something? Yeah. Yep. No, no, my teeth. Now, we have a two. One, two, three. Three. I'll do a milk in here. Do a bit in here. There's a little bit in here. Just a little bit.
Okay, sorry, just trying to stop This foundation this presents children. Where you have seen that. So I'm hoping that gave you some um, examples of what the kinds of skills and behaviors you might see around uh, 8, 18, and 36 months in relationship to this um, understanding of number sense. So let's move on. The next question that we're going to explore is the early math skill of classification. Like number sense, classification is another one of those 10 cognitive foundations in the cognitive domain. As defined on the slide, classification is the developing ability to group, sort, categorize, connect, and have expectations of objects and people according to their app attributes. So that's a pretty complex math concept. We're going to watch a video now um, that will focus on classification. And again, what we might expect to see of children at 8 and 18 months. The video will cover in depth how children of these two ages distinguish between familiar and unfamiliar people, places and objects, and explore the differences between them. It will also touch on how children show awareness that objects are connected. That shows up around 18 months. And also how children begin to match two objects that are the same. As you watch and listen to the video clip, think about a time recently that you've maybe seen an infant or toddler in your program demonstrate their early understanding of classification. This exploration of the concept of classification is happening all the time with infants and toddlers. Here's the video clip. This foundation explores children's developing ability to group, sort, categorize, connect, and have expectations of objects and people according to their attributes. At around eight months, children distinguish between familiar and unpeople places and objects and explore the differences between them. Is it not sweet Is it At around 18 months, children show awareness when objects are in some way connected to each other, match two objects that are the same, and separate a pile of objects into two groups based on one attribute.
at around 36 months. So now that you've had an opportunity to um, think about what uh, kinds of behaviors show up at eight and 18 months, we're gonna look at the next age range. And the video clip will outline how 36 month olds begin to group objects into multiple piles based on one attribute at a time, maybe by color, size, or shape, as well as how these children uh, begin to group things that are similar but not quite the same. For example, maybe pile of farm animals and then ocean anim animals or fruit and meat in the dramatic play area. So let's, let's watch this clip. This foundation explores children's developing ability to group, sort, categorize, connect. Sorry, I want to just show you the 36 month old section. So I'm going to push us ahead. Here we go. You can have the other one. Okay, it's orange like a pumpkin. It is orange like a pumpkin. Here. What? Does your pony have a name, Ellie? Uh. Um, Cinderella, because she's a girl. Oh, Cinderella. There's one more just like that. It's called, it's called a bling bling. A bling bling. It's called a bling bling. What's a bling bling? It is so Bling. It's called a bling bling. When it's round, you call it a bling bling. Then is this a bling bling? Yeah. Here you go. It is a bling bling. Yeah. Oh, that was not a bling bling. Mm -hmm. It is a circle. A little circle. So in that last video clip, we saw children at 36 months of age um, really exploring classification. In this photo, uh, the, the girl is sorting small plastic ducks and chicks and eggs. It's appear she, it appears she's classifying these objects by overall similarity. She's put all the ducks together, all the eggs together, and some of the chicks together. The important point here is she's sorting them in a way that makes sense to her. As her classification skills expand and grow, her sorting will become more complex. She may start to sort by more than one attribute. Whatever she chooses to do with these items, the fact that she is making her own meaning is what is most important. There's no right answer here. And what I love to see in this photo is that she's so deeply involved in exploring classification and she's doing it based on her own interest and initiative. Those are really key elements of um, supporting early math skills. Okay, we're gonna go to another section of our presentation here today. Uh, this is the section called Math is Everywhere. Um, hopefully by this point in the presentation, you've heard some examples of how math is woven into our daily lives and interactions. I'd like to highlight a few other examples of how math is everywhere and all around us. 
let's look at how math is found in nature. And I'm a big gardener, so um, this is important to me. Math and math concepts are infused in nature and throughout the natural world. One term I've learned over the years is the Fibonacci sequence or series. And when I say that term out loud, it makes me feel like a real mathematician, so you can try it on too. The images on the slide depict examples of the Fibonacci sequence, which is a repetitive sequence found in nature. You may have learned about this in your own schooling. And I share this with you as an example of how math truly is everywhere. We can point out these types of natural patterns and sequences during our interactions and explorations with very young children. And the additional bonus here is that when children are introduced to the wonders of nature early on, they hold a deeper appreciation for our planet and can gain unlimited experiences with these types of math concepts in a very engaging way. So noticing these types of sequences, patterns, and other math concepts in nature is a win for everyone. Now let's consider how our everyday language and communication is embedded with references to math terms and concepts. As we continue to think about how math is everywhere, our third area of consideration is around our everyday language and communication. So here, I'd like you to ask yourself, think about the words that you often use with young children in your everyday language with infants and toddlers. Think about the last thing you said to a child in your life. What words did you use? Now let's consider how our everyday language and communication naturally includes a whole range of early math terms and concepts. There are only 20 words. These I'm gonna share with you are only 20 words that we use on a regular daily basis that reflect multiple early math concepts. Guess what? The use of early math language and terms often is already happening. What we want to do next is to be even more intentional around the use of these types of terms that expand on a child's early math learning. I ask you to think about this because I want to remind you, you are using math language all day long in all settings with all kinds of people. So the chances are you are integrating some of these words into your interactions with infants and toddlers as well. An additional step related to this type of weaving in of early math language is to help families to see what they are already doing to support their young child's early math learning. Point out when you hear a parent or family member use one of these math terms, the more they can see that they have this skill already and are doing what it takes to support their child's learning, the more confidence they will feel around supporting their child's early math skills and that confidence will only grow as the math concepts get a bit more complex when you reach junior high or high school. When we use this kind of early math language intentionally, children to communicate about things, about amounts of things, by using words such as more and bigger. Adults can introduce math concepts like size and shape and spatial words like in, between, and under during any kind of interaction with a child. As we said earlier, these moments should not feel like lessons. They should occur naturally in all moments of the day and in all of our interactions. It's also important and crucial, I would say, to consider how best to support a young child who is learning more than one language. So, one way to approach that situation is when working with a child who is perhaps a dual language learner, we need to speak in many short sentences and provide key math concepts both in English and the child's home language or primary language, absolutely whenever possible. And I wanna challenge you here to make that happen. Learning a few key, uh, key, key terms in any language is not a big lift. It's a doable step in supporting all children to expand vocabulary in whatever language they are learning. So let's turn our focus on that um, child's primary teacher, which really is their family. 
Family members, friends, and teachers play an essential role in supporting the cognitive development of infants by providing the healthy interpersonal and social-emotional context in which cognitive development unfolds. Caring, responsive adults provide the base from which infants can fully engage in behaviors and interactions that promote learning. For example, infants are introduced to counting skills through everyday interactions, and these types of warm, loving interactions support the child's development in all domains, not just their early math learning. An example of a routine that involves a type of repetitive sequence might be a favorite bedtime ritual, such as reading three books, then two hugs, three kisses, and lights out. These are the types of family-based practices that are embedded with math concepts. Remind families again that they are already doing this. In that simple bedtime routine, they are supporting their child's early math learning. They don't need to do anything differently. Families play an important role in teaching these early math skills, which support the child's later school readiness. Research, in fact, shows that children are more likely to have higher math school sc scores <coughs> excuse me, when their parents include math activities at home. The best way to do this is to encourage families to explore math concepts with children during their regular daily activities and routines. Support families in recognizing how their, their important cultural skills and traditions might include math concepts and do, not might, they will. Um, they might, may explore patterns as they're clapping and dancing to their family's favorite music. Um, they're exploring numbers and measurement while making maybe the family's favorite dish for dinner or a special celebration. So let's look at some other simple ways to bring math into the family's daily routines with their child. And of course, all of these ideas apply to caregiving routines as they're carried out in the childcare setting as well. Math concepts are a natural part of routines and activities throughout the day. This is true for both children and us as adults. As we know, math refers to numbers and counting, but it also includes knowledge of shapes, patterns, measurements, and spatial sense. Infants and toddlers naturally explore these math concepts as they play. Adults can highlight the math in children's everyday experiences by providing language, as we've talked about, and support. By the intentional use of math talk uh, during what you're already doing with children, you're introducing, as we've mentioned, spatial concepts like um, I'm going to pick you up and then put you down in your crib, or they might compare the size of their shoes as they get ready to go outside. Your sneakers are smaller than my sneakers. Adults can use math language during mealtimes. How many blueberries do you have left? Do you need more? The more math language children hear each day, the greater the growth of their math knowledge. We can support the child's active participation in personal care routines. During these routines, such as diapering, feeding, eating, dressing, and even wiping a nose, infants and toddlers can participate actively. Let's highlight how routines usually consist of a sequence of events. For instance, the steps one follows with hand washing, turning on the water, getting the soap, washing, rinsing, and drying hands happen in the same order each time. The predictable nature of care routines provides an excellent opportunity for infants and toddlers to participate and to anticipate the next step. A predictable schedule and routine can also help infants and toddlers learn about the concept of time. For example, nap time always happens after my bottle and my daddy reads me two books. Going through routines also teaches children about patterns. We always wash our hands before we eat. All of this predictability and consistency in routines leads to a deeper understanding of math concepts, such as patterning, sequencing, and even some classification. Children develop these early foundational math skills through their self-initiated exploration and play with materials and through simple interactions. Children benefit from early spatial play. Research shows that there is a relationship between how often young children play with puzzles, 
and their later spatial skills. Infants and toddlers develop these spatial skills by mouthing objects, turning toys in their hands, and looking at them from different perspectives, and using materials like nesting cups or shape sorters. Spatial skills can be improved with practice at any age, which is good news for me because I can still hope to improve my understanding of spatial relationships. So our job is really to arrange the toys, materials, and equipment in an interesting way to engage and extend the mind of the curious toddler. For example, you might have a group of toddlers who want to dump and fill. Well, then expand and enhance their play around that. Give them many opportunities to dump and fill a variety of substances in a variety of containers. Their play needs to be open-ended and we need to offer them a variety of materials. Special materials are not needed here. They can, the materials can be everything from cups to containers to socks from the laundry. They learn about measurement as they fill and dump. It could be sand, water, or dirt. They can use those same cups they use to dump to learn about size and how things fit together. We need to be sure to use these everyday um, materials, again, to be inclusive of families. I hope you have gotten a few ideas from our time together today about how math is everywhere and what we can do to support the young child's uh, early math skills. So now I'm gonna close up our time together. I'd like to share with you again on this resource slide, um, the core sources of information that I use for this presentation today was the Infant Toddler Learning and Development Foundations, our um, California Infant Toddler Curriculum Framework, as well as the All About Young Children uh, website. Um, this slide shares with you a little bit more of our resources about PITC. Um, on our website, you can get all kinds of resources and um, um, ideas. Also, a link to our PITC Regional Support Network. And then if you're interested in our online classes, I happen to be our online program manager and I can answer any of your questions about that because that's part of my job as well. So in closing, I really want to appreciate your time here and your attention and participation. By approaching the active learning of infants and toddlers with a sense of wonder, teachers and families can nurture the children's sense of wonder and their growing understanding of and fascination with the people and things in their immediate environment. We are helping to build the world's future mathematicians and that's a very important job. So again, thank you so much for your time and attention. My contact information is on the slide here. I hope you will not hesitate to reach out to myself or um, the rest of my team in California. Uh, PITC is here for you. And we, you are our focus, folks. So I really hope you enjoy the rest of the symposium. And again, thank you for your commitment to the care and well-being of children under three years old. Thank you so much. Have a great day.